Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! Newton's third law is the science behind balloon-powered rocket cars. It's also the science behind a maxed out rocket car that I can ride. Plus bowling balls and an interrupting sign. Today on Science Max, experiments at large. Greetings, Science Maximites. I am Phil McCordick, and this is Science Max Experiments at Large. Today, we're going to be experimenting with the balloon-powered car. Here's how it works. Woohoo! It all has to do with Newton's third law. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, we don't, we don't have to do this now. We can, this is all for later. We can build the cars first and then we can, uh, let's go over here. So how do you build a balloon powered car? Well, I suggest you be science maximites because there's any number of ways you can build a balloon powered car. You do not have to follow my design. You should come up with one of your own. It may even be better than the one I built, but I will give you some tips though that make it a lot easier. First of all, you need something to stick your balloon on that has an opening on it. I used a turkey baster for this car. I just pop the top off, and remember to tell an adult that you're using the turkey baster. And then you stick the balloon on there, and it allows you to attach something to the car, and it also makes it easier to blow up the balloon. <laughs> you can use any number of things, even just uh, any kind of tube that you find lying around. It helps you attach the balloon to the car and it helps you blow up the balloon way easier. The other thing you should think about when you make your balloon powered car is how you're going to make the wheels roll. Once you've decided on the base of the car, you could use anything, even just a piece of cardboard like this, you can do your wheels in two ways. The first way is to attach the wheels to the axle. This is how I made the axle of this car. I used a shish kebab skewer and I stuck it inside a straw, just like that. And then I attached the lids to the shish kebab skewer. So the lids and the shish kebab skewer are attached and they rotate in the straw. That's one way to make the wheels turn. The other way is to tape down the axle or whatever you're going to use uh, and have the wheels spin around on the axle. Two great ways to make your wheels turn and it really kind of depends on the wheels you're using. You can make your own design and keep refining it and making it better and faster or do what I like to do and make a whole bunch of different cars. So we've got this one. Uh, this one I made out of paper plates and this is a snorkel. Awesome. This one is the rock car because there's a rock on it. I've got uh, the dragster model. It's a long broom handle, and it might not work that well, but who, who knows? And this is my favorite design. It's made out of waffles and an ice cube tray. This is why I make a whole bunch of different cars, because I can race them. Sunday, 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 at the Science Maxadrome. It's the balloon powered car winner take all drag race of awesome. First up, the Eliminator. Better late than never, it's the Procrastinator! <laughs> Crushing the competition, it's the Terminator! Feel the chill of the refrigerator. <laughs> All right! And last but not least, the um, regurgitator.
<sighs> well, when you build your balloon-powered cars, you can figure out what worked or uh, what didn't work and try modifying your designs to make them work even better. That is science. And now we're gonna max it out because this is Science Max Experiments at Large. So we're gonna take that small balloon-powered car that we just built and we're gonna make it much, much bigger. I'm gonna go to the Center for Skills Development and Training and we're gonna use the science behind the small balloon-powered car and we're gonna make it big. That science is Newton's third law. But there's Newton's plenty of- third law. No, there's, for every action, there's, there's, there's plenty of time for this later. We're not doing, action. we're not doing this bit now. We're doing that bit in a minute. So we could, wait, wait, no, I, I said we're doing it later. We're doing it later. <sighs> Whoa. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Phil. This is Sarah, and she's got a master's degree in physics from McMaster University. That's right. And we're gonna be talking about Newton's third law. Ooh, look out, look out, duck. Uh, sorry, sorry. There was a sign that kept coming in. Um, Never mind. Newton's third law. Well, what is that? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Right, so how does that work with our balloon car? Ah, cool. Okay, so if you blow up the balloon, what's gonna happen when you release it is the air is gonna push out with a certain force, which in turn is gonna cause the cart to move forward with the exact same force. Yeah, works great. So how come it doesn't work with my rock car? Ah, wow. Well, actually, it did work. So the balloon still pushes with the exact same force, which causes the cart to have the exact same force push forward, but your rock is really heavy, so you probably didn't see it move. Oh, so a lighter cart works better with the same amount of force. That's it. Well, there you go. Newton's third law. What? Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. I'm really starting to dislike that sign. Phil, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Our small balloon-powered car works because of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The air pushing out the balloon this way pushes the car with the same amount of force this way. So, in order to max it out, the plan is just to get a bigger wheeled cart and a much bigger balloon. So, everything should work out the same. Okay, so, sorry. Oh, I thought what we would do is I would, in order to max out the balloon-powered car, what we need is a cart to start with, and then I ride it. And we have a giant balloon, and then I go. Do you have a giant balloon? Ha, 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 Giant balloon! So, step one, uh, Sarah blows up the balloon. Okay. Use this air compressor, it'll probably be a lot faster. Sarah and I get to work blowing up the balloon, and it takes a long time. A very long time. Okay, human-sized balloon-powered car test. Take one. All right, Sarah. You got it? Yeah. Okay, let it go. Okay, go, go. Let it go. <laughs> I did. You did let it go. I did let go. Nothing is happening. It's not coming out fast enough, and you're a bit too massive. I don't think it's gonna work like this. Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, balloon powered car test two. No fill. I'll just take it and... Ah! What happened? Uh, I don't think it worked. The balloon popped. Phil, are you okay? This is why you wear protective eyewear. Uh, yeah. So, that didn't work. No. No, should we get another balloon? Uh... I think uh, we need something else. Okay, well, the air coming out of the balloon just what, didn't have enough force, so. We need the air to come out with more force. Yeah, do we get, what, a bigger a bigger balloon? I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think it's that. I think we need something with compressed air. Oh, like a scuba tank or a... Fire extinguisher, something like that. Yeah, that, that's what we need. Okay, sure. Well, we can, all right, so I don't know if that's safe to do that, so we'd have to build a, like a cage or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work on this. All right, well, back. Back to the drawing board. So okay. what we should do is we should get a- We need a, to find these tanks. We get the tanks and then we make a, like a frame out of aluminum or something. Okay, that could work. Yeah, That's they can idea. hold the tanks so yeah. they're safe. And then what we should do is- Who was Isaac Newton? He was a mathematician and probably number one on the list of top scientists of all time. 
Albert Einstein said, Isaac Newton was the smartest person that ever lived. You've got to be special if Einstein is calling you smart. Newton's three laws of motion was a huge idea, but did you know Newton also came up with the idea of gravity? The famous story is that in 1666, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree when he watched an apple fall and wondered why. Hey everyone, I just invented gravity, which was a big relief because up until then, everyone was just floating around. Okay, so it didn't happen like that. He didn't invent gravity, he gave a name to this invisible force and then described how it works. Not only did it make things fall down, but it was the same force that kept the moon circling the Earth and the Earth circling the sun. And he invented a new kind of math to explain how. We now call it calculus. See, I told you he was smart. He's very smart. This is hydrophobic coating. Hydrophobic literally means afraid of water, but it's not actually afraid of water. The chemistry of a hydrophobic coating prevents water molecules from penetrating anything you spray it on. You can get this stuff at the hardware store, and if you want, be science maximites and get an adult and think of the coolest thing you could spray with hydrophobic coating. I like to use things that do not go well when you put them in water, like uh, tissue. Yeah, doesn't look great when it gets wet. Here's a tissue coated in hydrophobic coating. Huh? Weird. Or it works the same with a paper towel. Paper towel in water, paper towel covered in hydrophobic coating, stays dry. Or how about a dinner roll? Dinner rolls really don't like water. See? Gross. But a dinner roll coated in hydrophobic coating? Weird. Just don't eat it. Now, it's time to max it out. I have coated half of my lab coat in hydrophobic coating, and the other half, I have not. Hydrophobic coating, regular lab coat. Half of me is wet, and half of me is dry. What's more, half of my outfit ended up being wet and half dry because the lab coat was protecting my outfit from getting wet. Now it's time to max it out even more. We have coated my entire outfit in hydrophobic spray. My shirt, my pants, and my lab coat. The pants have been taped to rubber boots, so no water's getting in there. And my shirt has been taped to my pants, so no water's getting in there. So here's the question. Can I get into the pool and out of the pool and stay dry? Let's find out. In the pool, out of the pool, and I'm still mostly dry. <laughs> now here's what really happened. I got into the pool, and I realized I should have duct taped the pocket, because all the water went in there, down into the rubber boots, started filling up the rubber boots, and now my entire leg is full of water because the hydrophobic coating isn't letting it come out. So the hydrophobic coating isn't keeping the water out, now it's keeping the water in. Let's take a closer look at Newton's third law. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. OK. All right, let's watch it back. When the sign hits me, I exert a force on the sign in the opposite direction. That makes the sign stop moving. It also exerts an equal force on me, causing me to fly off in this direction. Now, if I was to push this sign, I'm not only pushing the sign this way, but my feet are pushing against the ground in the opposite direction. It's, um, well, it's really easier to see if I'm not standing on the ground. Um, oh, hold on. Okay, so, huh? Oh, okay. So now that I'm hanging, watch, I push on the sign, but when I exert force on the sign to make it go this way, I go that way. Well, actually, it's, it doesn't work as well because the sign isn't as heavy as I am. So wait, I have this over here. This is a, a barrel, and it has stuff in it, and it weighs as much as I do. OK, so watch. If I push on the barrel like that, I go away from it as much as it goes away from me. So. There you have it. Newton's. Newton's third. No, hold on. Newton's. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. Okay, go. 
Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, using a giant balloon to push me on a cart, uh, didn't work. And I... Ah! What happened? The plan now is to use the compressed gas cylinder. Just like a balloon, these cylinders contain a lot of air. If we get a cart and put a gas cylinder in a cage, for safety, on the back and open the valve, the escaping air might have enough force to push me. This is two cubic meters of air. If we were to put it in a balloon, the balloon would be this big. But if we compress the air, we can fit it all into one of these, a steel tank. This is what we're going to be using next for our air-powered car. Got it? Yep. All right. Good. So Sarah and I have been hard at work, and we've built the air-powered cart. We can't call it a balloon-powered cart anymore, because now we've got a compressed air tank, so it's not a balloon that powers it. Exactly. OK, so I'm going to sit on here. Sarah's going to turn on the tank, and I'm going to go. And before we do this, we should say, do not, under any circumstances, try this at home. We are trained professionals. You ready? I'm ready. OK, high five first. OK, now we do it. OK, so before I turn the tank on, make sure your feet are down and the brakes are on. Gotcha. Uh, Don't take them off till I say go. You have got it. All right. Ready? OK. Uh, yeah, it did work, but I feel I feel like it could work better. You want to go faster. I do want to go faster. This reminds me of the rock car. Yeah. Where we didn't have a big enough balloon. We need more force. We need more force. So should we get a bigger tank? Let's get more tanks. More, more tanks, more force. You're going to go faster forward. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. High five. All right, let's do it. All right. This is Newton's Cradle, and it's a really cool toy that demonstrates all kinds of laws of motion, including Newton's third law. Newton's what you do is you pull this one ball out, and when it hits these balls, they exert force on that ball to make it stop moving, but it exerts force on these balls, which travels through the balls and makes this one in the end fly out, like that. Now, there's a lot going on here, but you can really see how the force is equal that you put in and you get out if you use two balls. I swing two balls up, and two balls go out that side. Isn't that cool? Now, it wouldn't be science max unless we maxed it out, so come on. Whoa! OK. This is one we built out of bowling balls. Bowling balls. Bowling balls. <laughs> Instead of smaller balls. And I think it's going to work the same way. Let's find out. You throw one out, and, and <laughs> yeah, it works the same. OK, now let's try it with two balls. OK, ready? Wait, 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 wait. And two balls, throw them out. And two balls on that side. All right, so there you have it. Whoa. Newton's third law. Oh. Ah. Newton's ah. third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So our single pressurized tank created enough force to move me, but not very fast. The plan now is to do two things. First, we're going to triple the amount of thrust by using three tanks. We're also going to use some pipes that lock into each other to give me an initial push. These pipes slide together, and when the air is turned on, the pressure in the pipes will cause them to slide apart, which will push me forward. After that, I use what's left in the tanks to keep going. All right, now it's time to max it out. I've enlisted the help of a few more Science Max people. Thank you very much, Corey. You'll see now we have three tanks of compressed gas, and we've also got this nifty little contraption. How does this work, Sarah? All right, so each tank is Come attached back, to a tube, yeah. and you can see that each tube goes into this one main tube, so when we turn them on, pressure's going to build up, and we're going to go forward with more force. Well, that's great, and Reed is stacking cinder blocks. Thanks, Reed, uh, up so that will push uh, the pipe will push against the cinder blocks, and then I'll go that forward. way. All right, well, are you guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. 
Now, again, I have to say, thank you, Corey. I've got it. This is something you definitely don't want to try at home. We are all trained professionals. We have a physics degree here. We've got TV people that make sure that this is safe. So uh, watch it and enjoy, but please don't try any of this at home. Okay, I'm ready. Sarah, count me down. Three, two, one. Uh oh! Uh oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome! That was really awesome! All right, high fives! High fives! Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> and it's raining now, so it looks like we're gonna have to stop. So thank you very much for joining us on Science Max Experiments at Large in our episode on Newton's Third Law. Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. This one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I, I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Wait, I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb. It's working! It's working! <laughs> Newton's cradle at a bowling ball. Come on! You know this one. Sing along. Whee! Come on! I mean, come on! Science! Ooh. Yay! Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. This episode of Science Max is all about elastic energy. We use it to build a catapult and a paddle wheel boat, and then we max them out. We even learn some history. Elastic energy, today on Science Max Experiments at Large. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. I'm Phil McCordick, and today we're going to be building one of the most devastating, one of the most powerful machines known to medieval man using a plastic spoon, among other things. We're going to be building a catapult. Catapults were used throughout history for all kinds of reasons, to throw all kinds of things, but mostly big stone blocks at castle walls in order to knock them down. Here's what you need in order to build your own catapult. You need elastics, uh, pencils, uh, unsharpened is fine, Plastic spoons, like I said, and popsicle sticks. Popsicle, popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks. Um, I'm gonna go wash my hand. So here's the science behind what we're doing today. It's all about elastic force. Elasticity is a property of solid materials, like this elastic, and how much they tend to return to their original shape when deformed, like when I pull on it. Elastics are called elastics because they're great at doing just that. You can pull on it and pull on it and pull on it, and it'll, ow, 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 always return to its original shape. So we are using the power of elastic force today. Ow. Now it's time for a Science Max quiz. Elasticity is the ability for a material to return to its original shape when deformed, like this or this. Which of these materials have elasticity? A rubber band, a pencil, or a rock? Haha! -ha, this is a trick question. The answer is all three. Most solid materials have elasticity. Nearly everything will deform a little and still be able to return to its original shape. It all depends on how much. This is a steel bar. 
this is an elastic band, and this is an ice cream sundae. We're not talking about ice cream sundaes now, though, so get that out of here. Good. Now, a steel bar and an elastic band both have elasticity. A steel bar can be stretched to 1% of its length and still spring back. A rubber band can be stretched 300% or more. The difference between the two is why we make balls out of rubber and buildings out of steel. Because the other way around wouldn't be good for balls or buildings. This has been a Science Max Quiz. All right, let's build our catapult. The first step, take four pencils and stick your popsicle stick in between so you have two on the top and two on the bottom. And then use your elastic to go around and around and around. That's why I like building things with elastics because it makes it very fast to tie things together because once you go around and you have it nice and tight, you just pop it over the end and voila, it stays together. And that is how you start making your frame. Put more pencils on that side and another popsicle stick on the other end held on at the corners with more elastics. Then, take even more elastics and put them right around the middle until you get this. I've added a few more elastics around the middle here, and that is where we're gonna get all of our elastic force. I think I have six. The more you use, the better it's going to work. Take your popsicle stick, stick it in between the elastics, and then start spinning it around. Here's the reason I use Pencils and popsicle sticks is because the pencils are a little bit longer, which allows you to twist the popsicle stick around in the middle and build up the elastic force. Now, because I'm twisting, the elastic force we're using here is called torsion or twisting force. When you feel you have enough torsion, pull your popsicle stick down a little bit so it won't unwind on you, and you'll see that you have all kinds of elastic energy. Then, take your spoon, and stick it on the popsicle stick. And you can also break off the popsicle stick if you want to make sure it's the right length. And it works like that. To make the frame, you just need more pencils and elastics. The trick is to make a triangle with two pencils attached to your frame. They should stick up right where your catapult arm would be fully upright. Then take a final pencil and put it across the top. Don't forget to pull the arm back before you put the pencil across Otherwise, it'll end up on the wrong side. Now, this is very complicated, and I went pretty fast, so if you want the step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to build this, go to our website. And there you go, a catapult of your very own that you can use to knock down very small castle walls. I've also built a larger catapult using all of the same principles. Pretty good, huh? It's got a longer arm, which means I can throw marshmallows even further, whoa, or I can throw larger marshmallows, or I can throw very large marshmallows. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, is that the largest catapult you're gonna make? Well, of course not. This is Science Max, experiments at large. I'm headed to the center for skills development and training, and we're gonna max out the catapult so that it's big enough to throw Ooh, one of these. Zach. Hey, Phil. How you doing? All right. This is Zach. He's a mechanical engineer. You build machines for a living, right? That's right. Great, because I need help building a catapult. OK, but what's with the pumpkin? Well, the pumpkin is what I want to throw out of the catapult. Um, see, I figure we just take the small design and we just make it so that we can throw one of these. What do you think? You're going to need a really big catapult. Yeah, and I'm also going to need some really big elastics. Where do you get those? Well. In medieval times, they used rope to make large catapults. Oh, OK. Well, rope is a lot easier to get, and that would be fine. Uh, and I want to make this arm uh, as long as this piece of wood here. 
This is gonna be a huge catapult. It's a huge catapult. I guess we should build it outside, though, huh? Let's do it. Okay, it's, it's over that way. Okay. I'll follow you. Sure, do you want a hand with that? No, no, I'm fine. You go ahead, and okay. I'll, I'll just, maybe if you hold the door open for me, I could, just hold, no, it's... You know what, you go and I'll, I'll meet you. Make sure you go. Our full-size catapult is going to look a lot like the popsicle stick version. We start with a four-sided frame and add some legs on the bottom. Our spoon is going to be replaced by a long throwing arm with a basket on the end. Then we need a really strong cross brace at the top to stop the arm. Just like in the small version, using a triangle shape is the best because triangles are very strong. Finally, we need something to wind around and around which is going to give us our elastic force. Instead of elastics, we're gonna be using rope for our catapult because rope has just the right amount of elasticity. But unlike medieval times, we're gonna be catapulting pumpkins. Once Zach and I got it all put together, it looked like this. Okay, we have built a catapult. Check it out. It's pretty solid and I think it's pretty amazing. And just like in the small catapult, we have our elastic force. But this time we're using rope, right Zach? Yes. Okay, and rope will work as well as the elastic did in the small one? Yeah. All right, great, so what do we do? It's really well, loose we now. We need to wind this up so oh that we put God. some tension okay, into it. Up. Go! The reason a catapult works is because the rope is twisted. The elasticity in the rope wants to unwind, which gives the catapult its power. Just like the small wind catapult, it. the more like you that. wind it, the better it works. Good. Usually in medieval days, they had whole teams of people doing this job, but it's just me and Zach now. How are you doing, Zach? All right. Okay. And then we clamp it on here. So the thing doesn't unwind, right? Yeah. Good. All right. Now we have our pumpkin, and we're going to fire our pumpkin in our castle wall, which is made out of cardboard boxes over there. Pumpkin. All right, here we go. Pull on the arm back. Oh, oh, that elastic force is pretty strong. Okay. How do you think, we're, do you think that pumpkin's a good size? Oh, it's pretty big. You think? Oh, a little it's too big. Too, it's too big for our basket. Yeah. Smaller pumpkin! Smaller pumpkin! I'll hold this. No rush, Zach. No rush. Oh, okay, uh, rush, Zach. Uh, Can't hold. Oh, yeah. Man. Can't hold arm. Okay, ready? One, two, three! It didn't work that well. No, it um, that well. Yeah, so it went and it flew and it landed here, which is a little farther yeah, away from the wall than I'd short. like it to be. One third of the way to the wall! I don't know if that's enough. What do we do to make it better? Well, the way we're throwing it right now, we just have the pumpkin in a, you know, at the end of the arm. So yeah. if we bake, make some kind of a sling so that we fling it as we're bringing it up. We make a sling? Yes. All right, I don't know how to make a sling, but you know how? Sure. All right, we'll make it and then you can explain how it works. Yeah. All right, good. Let's put the pumpkin over here. We'll put it, we'll recycle it later. Max Historica. Good morrow to you. I am Lord Fillington III and welcome to my medieval castle. Throughout history, lords and kings have built castles and walls to keep people out. I built my castle to protect my prize collection of snow globes. I have so very many, and they're all mine. <laughs> oh, hello, you down there. You can't come in, this is my castle. And through our history, there have been people who've been wanting to get into those castles because Lord Fillington has been hogging all the snow globes and I'd, well, I'd like to look at them. But the odd part is figuring out how to get into the castle, because I can't just come up to the wall and start hammering on it. Huh? Taste the wrath of my water balloon! Because, because if I get too close to the castle, he can get me. Ha 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 ha! Fortunately, there's this thing called a catapult. Oh, fiddlesticks. They have a catapult. What you do is you put something heavy in the end here, and the catapult fires it at the walls of the castle, knocks them down, all from far enough away that the people in the castle can't get to you. 
Ah! Oh, I surrender! Don't knock my walls down! Uh, it'll take me all week to fix them! Oh! All right, all right, you can have a snow globe! Oh. <laughs> and that's how catapults were used in history! Oh, so beautiful! <laughs> Back to our maxed out catapult. Our first design threw a pumpkin just like it was supposed to, except it only threw it one third of the way to the wall. Now Zach and I are planning to outfit the catapult with a sling. The sling attaches to the end of the throwing arm and gives the pumpkin a lot more distance to travel. Because the pumpkin is traveling a longer distance in the same amount of time, it will be going faster, which will hopefully get it to the wall, or at least a lot farther than before. So we built this sling. How does this work, Zach? Well, we've got one end tied here. Yeah. And then we put the pumpkin in here. Wait, wait. OK, pulling arm down. Pulling arm down. <sighs> OK, yeah, now what? Now we put the pumpkin in here. Put the pumpkin in there. And yeah. And we loop this over the back of the, oh. over that. As the throwing arm goes up, this will slide off the back of the throwing arm and it will release the pumpkin. All right, you're the expert, I believe you. Let's try it out. Three, two, one. Oh. Whoa. OK, that Better. works really well. You know what the problem is, though? We still don't have enough oomph. Yeah, it needs more power. Need, well, so what do we do? Should, I don't know if we can crank that rope anymore. Uh, I think we're at the limit of our rope power, but if we added some more elastic. I thought we weren't going to use elastic. Well, we used elastics in our small demo models. So what if we use some more? We have got, elastics? Uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I brought have... some in here, just in case. What's this? It's uh, surgical tubing. It's like a giant elastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess this is elastic force, so do we? Do we Twist well, it around can, at the bottom there? Well, we or? just wrap it around the throwing arm like this. Oh, I see. So we tie yeah. it here. Yeah, we just need a lot more. And then and then we pull this, and it would be, oh, yeah. That would yeah. make a lot more. So we just need a lot more of this elastic. Uh, what is what is this again? Surgical tubing. Surgical tubing. It's like a giant elastic. Fantastic. All right. Goggles on. Goggles on. Yes. Yes. Here's another fun way you can play with elastic force. Take a milk carton, I prefer Science Max milk because it's the creamiest. 2% cream, 100% science. Wrap some elastic bands around it with some popsicle sticks on the bottom, sort of like feet. Then take some clamshell packaging, which wraps just about anything you buy nowadays, and cut out a square or a rectangle. Then wrap some tape around that square with an elastic in it, and put the elastic on the feet of your milk carton. Then wind it around and make sure you go backwards so your paddle wheel boat will go forwards when you put it in the water. And there you go, a paddle wheel boat. Now it is time to max it out. Elastic Force Paddle Wheel Boat Mattress. I need, I need a, a better name. But I've made a giant paddle wheel boat that will work on Elastic Force because I've got surgical tubing as my elastics, and that's an air mattress. And then I use some lumber to hold it all together. And of course, I need a paddle wheel. And what better thing to use in a pool than a flutterboard? OK, here we go. So normally you're not allowed to wear your clothes and your shoes in the pool, but I got special permission because of science. Besides, I'm not worried at all, so I didn't wear my swimming outfit because I figure I can totally do this entire experiment without even getting wet. That is how confident I am. All right, now the tricky part, We'll be getting on to the mattress. OK, here we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Whoa. Ha <laughs> ha! The SS Science! Hey, SS Science, that's a great name for this. Look, it works great. And I managed to stay totally dry. Huh? Well, almost. Whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> you thought I was going to fall in the pool, but I didn't. Uh-oh. My flutterboard. 
has, has stopped moving and I'm, I'm in the middle of the pool. Almost. <laughs> yeah. Didn't think this through. No. 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 No, that's not going to work. Maybe I'll... Maybe I'll wait. Our maxed out catapult was working well with the sling we attached to it, but it still didn't make it all the way to the wall. Zach's idea is to attach a bunch of surgical tubing to the cross piece of the catapult. Surgical tubing is pretty much big elastics, so we'll have two places we're getting elastic force from, the rope and the surgical tubing. Hopefully this design is enough to help our catapult fling a pumpkin far enough to hit the castle wall. All right, here we go. Uh, you hold that, I get this. We got our system down now. Okay. Oh. This goes up to there. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Uh, nope. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, 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 it went too far. It went too far. We are, that's so good. Oh man. Okay, so all we gotta do is move the catapult back. So you get that side, I'll get this side, and we'll move the catapult. See, now our catapult is too good. We gotta back it away from the castle. All right. Let's go again! Aha! Pumpkin! Pumpkin. Pulling arm back! Pulling arm back. Uh, grunting. Yeah. Loading! Pumpkin! Loading. Hooking rope on arm! Hooking rope on arm, more grunting. More grunting! Uh, pulling back strongly. One, two, three! Oh! 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 Wow! <laughs> We're inside the castle. We're still inside the castle. Oh man, it's an excellent shot though. So what do we do, move the catapult back? Yeah. Move the catapult back! What about so here? Here. Here we go again. Pumpkin! Pumpkin. Loading the arm. Loading arm. <laughs> All right, you ready? You think it's gonna work? We've got we've done every modification we can possibly do. So you think it's gonna work this we time? We did it. It's gonna work. Okay, here we go. I'm excited. All right, ready? Ready. One, two, three. Whoa! Yeah! Woohoo! High fives! Well, there you have it. Awesome job. Now we need to throw fingers to see who gets to rebuild the castle. Okay. One, two, three! Oh, thanks very much for joining us. Let's just take a break, I'll rebuild the castle. <laughs> you see, this is exactly how catapults used to work. They'd hit the same part of the wall over and over until they made a big hole and that would weaken the wall. Fortunately for me, it's really easy to fix. Uh, just put this right in here. Oh man. Uh, the pool would be closing in five minutes. No, no, I'll do it. No, no, I'll wipe it. Taste the wrath of my water balloon! I don't believe it really sells it if he doesn't smash the water balloon. Does he? Good moral to you! <laughs> I got my feather in my, my face. <laughs>